Hey there, and welcome back to Cursed Seeds, an educational monster train series where we struggle through the toughest challenges around. As far as this particular challenge, I was very interested in it because it is Wormkin. It's actually Spine Chief. This is, this is something I talk about a lot, but it's pretty unlikely to happen in actual rotating random streaks. And the reason why that comes up is because Spine Chief rules in general. I think he's the top three champion, so number three. And I think that's pretty solid. He, When you get to the top few champions, they're usually so far beyond the others that there's really not much discussion, right? I don't, I don't think anyone who's played the game a bunch disagrees on this. Now, you might argue that the top three maybe switch places, but I don't think there's any question about what the top three are. So Spine Chief is in that. I think he's number three. That's my current stance. The reason why this is interesting is because one of the challenges with Spine Chief is you generally need to have a lot of echo generation. It's just an important part of Chief's whole retinue or style rather. And the drag play is very unlikely to come up. But this also comes up with what is it, Exile Hellhorned for Queen Zimplings. That's also a tricky one because you he's big is the thing. He's big and that means that playing things on his floor are difficult, especially once you take a banner unit. This actually usually isn't a problem on ring one because you don't have a banner unit yet. So you just play the dregs or the queen zimplings instead of a train steward. And then he solos the combat. But on ring two, when you have a banner unit, it becomes much trickier and it actually kind of cascades and becomes worse as you add cards to your deck. So... Generally, this is an interesting challenge. Usually, I would never consider these cursed because these runs still have Spine Chief in them and Wormkin. And while I don't think Wormkin is like busted or anything, it's a strong clan. It seems well, it's generally well tuned, has a lot of strong cards, and I think can do a lot of work. And I think that, you know, dregs are pretty solid. Specifically, melting is solid in this case. So it's an interesting challenge that we're faced with. And I'm kind of curious to see what is specifically cursed about it, because not a lot was actually mentioned here. Let's see. We do have two wins as well, which I will point out. This is interesting. Both of these are one of these is really low scoring, actually. Yeah, one of these is actually really low. 43 means you took a lot of damage along the way. So kind of an interesting challenge there. Let's see. But otherwise, I didn't get told anything about this run. Just like someone was playing through to get the logbook done and ran afoul of something they considered cursed. And the rest of the the rest of the text sent to me here is completely spoiler text, so I haven't opened it. I don't know what it is. So I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I suppose so. There's just a question of curious how you guys solve this run. So Fair enough. Obviously, there is a very high scoring play here. 57k is pretty excellent. This could be any number of things, but generally speaking, this is a very dominant position. Potentially high shards, potentially very just clean, no damage taken, stuff like that. So, all right, fair enough. In case you're joining us for the first time and don't know have any idea what's going on, first, welcome. Second, the idea behind this series is it is viewer submitted runs. So if you're playing Covenant 25 Monster Train with no mutators and you run into a run you consider particularly challenging, so cursed in the context of this series, or particularly awesome, so blessed in the context of this series, you can go to your run summary, generate a challenge link, which looks like a three word combo, similar to what we have here at the top of the screen, and send it my way. The best way to send these to me are on my Discord server. There is a specific channel dedicated to this. The nice thing about it is it means that other people will play the run before I get to it. So that's probably where some of these wins come from and things like that. So you get a little bit of traction right away, in my opinion, which is great. I think that's excellent. You get some community feedback. Beyond that, though, you can get it to me however you can, right? YouTube comments are another popular one. I've got, I still get them by email. It's kind of ridiculous, but it's all good. I do have a business email attached to the account that some people really like sending uh, curse seeds to. So fair enough. I do check it. But yeah, that's essentially what we're working with. Nothing else crazy to report. We're currently on, what is this, a 65 win streak on this series. This last one was 
we had double Morsel Maker infused multi strike in camp armor to nameless sirens, which was pretty awesome. We had a we took a space take so we could fit all of that and a superfood to aggressive edible one primordium on the floor. There was a void binding furnace tap play that had no hold over on apparels so but we did have perils didn't really help a bunch so essentially the i've been doing this a lot recently which is kind of weird i don't know why this has come up so many times in recent challenges maybe it's just people have been running into it and it's just random luck that i'm seeing a lot of these submit submissions coming this way but essentially it's ember drain lines that do not have the pieces to make a normal ember drain line you know you find like the holdover on apparels you get like a spell chain you dupe it you feel good you generate a lot of ember then you play a couple void bindings and some furnace taps and you're fine that's kind of the typical ember drain line this was one of those just nightmare ember drain lines where you're like okay well i guess i have to make my entire deck free so i can play it without ember and then we just have to perfectly time when we do things and then drop the furnace tap drop the void bindings and go so very weird and we had to also do this in the diligent, so kind of like the nightmare scenario for Ember Drain, but we got the win. There was also some excellent Chain of Gems and Sigiled Seaweed stuff in that run as well. Sigiled Seaweed popped the heck off. I was very impressed, so. But that is about all I've got there, so I think we can go ahead and get started here. As always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's see what Spine Chief has for us today. Very interested in this one. Let's go. All right. Hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing okay. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Nothing too crazy to report. Lots of uh, lots of work to do. So much work to do. It feels like it's a never-ending wellspring of work to do, and it is stressful, but I will push through it. It's like real work. Th th these Monster Train episodes are like distractions, are very nice little pleasant getaways from all of that, so... We'll, uh, we'll see how that goes, but hopefully you're all doing a little better than that, but good regardless. So yeah, let's get in on this. Today, as before, we are Default Wormkin, Default Melting. A not great clan combo, but it's not abysmal, right? I don't see this as terrible, simply because you have Spine Chief, you have Fractures. It's hard to consider it that bad. And you know Melting's a strong clan too, so I don't feel bad about it. We'll go and then we'll see Double Barrel Daedalus, Rage Arcus, Chased Seraph with Bogfly, Dripfall, Total Recall as my starters. Bogfly is okay. I do like Bogfly in the opener simply because it's a very powerful common card. It's a very powerful unit compared to Train Stewards. This guy quickly gets usurped by other things, by other means. He's never... I cannot imagine having random bog flies as your line into the divinity actually like playing a bog fly from hand i outside of just throwing them away because you couldn't remove them they never end up being relevant now bog chrysalis the egg is considerably better it's a banner unit it spawns two of them it, it carries over upgrades there's a lot of reasons why that's just way better in general but the regular old bog fly kind of just an early game card and that's okay drip falls fine i don't hate it it's a good utility card, big fan of that. Total Recall is terrible, but, you know, I guess. This card is so bad, in my opinion. One of the worst in the game, but that's okay. We'll press on. I think it's fine. It does kind of make our opener a little bit awkward, just rolling some bad stuff, but all good. Temples today are two, four, six, and eight. It's actually a really good spread of four temples. I'm pretty pleased with that. There's only a little tweak I would make if I were going to make this ideal my perfect four temple setup is actually instead of two it's on three and then you have four six and eight which is otherwise perfect for me so just a small tweak and you would consider I would consider this perfect roll now granted of course five temples is even better but I, I like to think of it from the most likely circumstance right four temples are the most likely that you see five is pretty uncommon three is pretty uncommon so anyway dupe on eight is on steel side no removals with it it's okay but not great we have a removal dupe on seven however which is excellent it is with health though unfortunate competes with a money steel shop okay yeah sure steel and magic's on six six has the uh, 
magic shop with vortex and a cave that's pretty strong if I can use it. I do value magic shops on Wormkin. Upgrading ra fractures is not a bad thing. So there's a horde cave trinket shop on five. There is money in the middle, which is nice when you have a trinket shop. I like that quite a bit. Competes with a removal and magic shop, though. No steel shop on five. Seems OK, but yeah. Random steel shop on four with health and money. Boo. We do have magic shop that's pretty good. Remnant banner, unstable vortex. That's good. Early game has no shops on ring three, interestingly. There's a hell vent with a wormkin banner and a horde plus pyre remains. We do have another wormkin banner with the steel shop on two. Interestingly, double Wormkin banners is one of the few instances where I would consider Infector, right? I actually quite like that line. And it's an interesting one because Spine Chief is so strong, I think his weakest line gets overlooked a lot. People are like, Slam Decayer. And it's like, when you have these units, I actually do lean a little away from Decayer. It's pretty okay with Corruptor, though, right? Still, Corruptor is better when you have the same problem, but... Hellhorned, things like Horned Warrior or Railbeater are on that in that run, and those are very standalone strong units that can happily take multi strikes. You have Gurg's Goad as a relic option. There are a lot of things that make that particular line Corruptor friendly, but then Corruptor is a little less friendly with Dregs. Note how we don't have any Burnout Extenders, so it's like okay, there's only so many options we can really pick here, and we don't have the reforms on Primitive Mold, so I don't know. Sketches with Wormkin? This is just Wormkin sketches. But the problem is, notice how many garbage units we have. This is funny. I think if you could assemble sketches Wormkin here, you'd be very strong. Look at this. You have Chief. You have a Dripfall, which you can give Intrinsic to, which can let you put Chief on the floor. And then you have double Wormkin banners. It's a really strong sketches line. Except you have a whole extra seven units you have to clear out to make this any remote remotely consistent, which is ridiculously difficult. Unless you see broken wheel or something, which I guess I assume we wouldn't be able to. That's really interesting to me. Huh. It'd be very gambly to take that here, but... The other interesting consideration is if you don't roll the sketches effectively and you just get a bunch of trash units, you can just play the run normally. There's almost the point of having so many units, it's kind of whatever, right? Would I ever gamble on that? Where are my removals here in this run? Four on the magic side, okay. Five on the magic side six on the magic side so if i go three magic shops in a row i get six removals here into the mid game there's a removal dupe on seven that's excellent because you'd want to dupe your sketches units that's eight removals in very convenient locations you skip all the steel shops in the mid game though which is a concern potentially you'd have to assemble something out of this wormkin banner on two which is not guaranteed this of course is not considering that we would be able to just, you know, buy removals at a shop. But after a certain point, that becomes a little expensive. You need to have a real strong money generator to consider it. Can I actually get seven extra removals? I mean, because I need four, I need 11 removals in total to make this remotely consistent. The combustible wax is a weird play. What could you do with the combustible wax? I mean, that enables things like... Paraffin Enforcer Infusion, Draft Infusion. I think the Combustible Wax is a winning pick as well, if I go a little bit more into Remnant. I actually think... Where's my... How do I, how do I do this? My other consideration is, can I ramp shards very quickly at the end? Because you see my two dupes are at the end back-to-back, -back and they're in good positions. Well, you know, it's not a removal dupe on eight, but seeing it with the Steel Shop is nice, at least. We could get, like, a final upgrade and then dupe it. So, and then the other one just gets a plus 25 or whatever. So even if I had only one upgrade on my unit, I'd be okay with this first dupe. 
And that's what, 30 shards plus the temple, 80? I mean, you could take essentially no shards in this whole run. Play it very chill. And then completely blast it at ring 7. Is that more consistent than just picking the combustible wax here? Yeah, so I mean, the idea here I'm considering would be you take hordes, you only take the one infusion that you want on your unit. And then that's essentially, what am I looking at? That's like 40 shards in a ring four. And then literally no other shards until ring seven. It makes your ring four a little tricky and gambly, especially if you're going sketches possibly into conduits. That ring four becomes the test of faith, basically. That's like you have to win ring four and then you get past it. We could, of course, save the infusion until later. Only walk in with the 15 from ring three. And then do the infusion on ring six, potentially. It's really bizarre. I think you can do this. It's difficult. It's definitely going to be one of the harder sketches Wormkin runs I've ever seen if I go this route. But I think it's doable. I'm going to click it. We're now committed to some bizarre stuff. And okay, so in this particular instance, because I have gone with this, I think Corruptor is better than Decayer here. I think Corruptor is better in general. So in this particular instance. So now we chill, right? Don't go hard. Remember, we're so inconsistent. We're just going to not click a lot of shard choices. I do want this unit draft desperately. We're in bizarre territory. We just get, a lot of stuff is just going to pour out of this, and it's going to have to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and drip Chief onto mid-floor. And going to play mid-bottom. Yeah, okay, fine. Sure, 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 sure. So the I kill whole mid floor and then all my units die essentially. Let's go ahead and ping out some fracture stuff here. It's fine. Sure. Okay. Total recall is this weird scenario where it pulls things from the discard. Sure. And then I can consume drop you. Play a dreg and then consume fracture you here, and that does something, I suppose. Sure, let's get this guy in the back for sure. Play another dreg down, and we actually do 30 here and feel okay about it. I mean, we're getting out of this combat for sure. We've cleared this, cleared that threshold. We can drip here, and we actually do all right. Sure, good job. Bizarre, but fine. These are going to look weird in general. We're going to be looking for Wormkin units, 100%. I want purple generation because it's going to be tough otherwise. So things like Hostingkin with purple. Not a card I would normally pick here, but still I'm going to grab it here. A purple drip fall. A molded is probably correct here, actually. The other interesting thing is that by choosing sketches, I have chosen against combustible wax so i do think molded is the right choice you can bring back a drag or something i already have a double drip falls so it's not that important to have another one molded yeah first of kin let's go cool big unit he's huge excellent we go right if i can take enough wormkin units i think we're reasonably confident we're going to be okay it's a quick in the shop shard soul carver okay Sure, I mean, that's right. We'll grab him too. And then we have our unit, or our units, I should say. The question is, what are we going to do exactly? I think it's going to be first of kin infused with Carver. This is a better combo. Quick is excellent on a sketches floor, so I'm just going to grab this quick right away and be okay with that. We're going to hold out for a multi-strike here, and then we're just going to take continually zero shards. 
We take nothing. We move on. Even if I don't roll well on this particular combat, noting that it's conduits, that's terrifying, we can still make good progress here. This sketches is... Not sketches. The sketches is dicey on this combat, but mostly the spikes is not great. We don't have good hits. We're going to take hits for the pyre. Let's not take this. Okay, so some stuff is going to show up mid-floor. You know what? Hey, fair enough. So we literally nothing happens down here. So let's go ahead and... Chief Carver up top on this particular one, I think. Carver goes downstairs, actually. Everything's huge. <laughs> right. 5551. Five, five, okay, sure. We have a Chief upstairs. I, can't, I literally can't even play the first of kin so let's just drip downstairs and save five health and it's okay it'll have to be this is gonna look strange i'm gonna drop dregs up top they will do a pretty decent job of clearing the floor i can then force enemies to go mid here with the fracture total recall garbage card it's fine we get the collector i guess it's something sure Let's play the dreg bottom. We're gonna put the bog fly down. I'm going to reap the dreg, I think, because I might draw another one. I'm gonna save the hosting kin here, I think. I guess I could play it. I will play it. Never mind. I'm just gonna blast it there. Fine. We clear mid floor. This whole thing is not nonsense. I can mold it back a more powerful drag now. Worth it. Cool. I can fracture in the back, which guarantees at least that we don't lose here. And if I... Rip fall, I think we get the kill. Yeah, we're actually just chilling. Cool. This is bizarre world and seems really risky, but I think with the density of stuff, we're gonna we're just gonna chaos our way through. I'm gonna take purple shelter here. Although echo transfer is nice, I think we want etches and we want yeah, for first of kin. Yeah, just take the purple shelter. Purifying cleanse. I don't think we want this card in particular. I'm not imagining playing many burnout units. The healing is okay, but no. And don't click on entombed explosive. That would be a terrible addition. We don't want to add units if we're not useful. Do we dupe something right now? I have my floor. I just need to assemble it. I don't think we do. I'm happy with my units. I don't need any others. And the dupe here would be what? I don't even know. So I'm going to go left and play it chill. I'm going to take the pyromains. I get the horde. Winged steel is not bad. It's better than the other one. That in case number, we do not have a tomb. I'm going to look in the caverns first. Monster rail spike. Excellent. That's the first one out. Perfect. Amazing. Free removal. Your friend. I will take this horde. Precious reflection. Votive key. Now, first friendly unit played. So this is always spine chief. Always Spine Chief, it looks like, I think. Do I hate that? Do I like that? He's not bad. I'm going to take Capricious Reflection. It's early enough. It's fine. Let's move on. I'm actually glad with that. that it's going to make some cards free, hopefully. And then upgrade some other things. We're playing this very bizarre, by the way. Okay, mid-floor actually rolled pretty well here. Because I can just do... Yeah, okay. I can put Chief on this floor. I could also put First of Kin on this floor, which is kind of neat. I do kind of like that. I could also... I think we do Chief upstairs. He's the best fit for adding in. Yeah, we'll Chief upstairs. And then I'm going to First of Kin downstairs. And we just drop in a bog fly here, which takes a hit. I can then put a drag in the back on bottom, which kills another guy. All good. I'm going to put a drag upstairs, just charge this floor a little bit. 
The thing is, is Double Barrel is present, and that's going to do a lot of damage to us, no matter what happens. So, let's drip Chief in, and we begin scaling mid-floor to the best of our ability, I think. It's the only thing we can do here. I do want drag on bottom floor. It kills a man. That's good. Yeah, it'll have to do. Double barrel bomb is very rough here, but it's okay. We will... I mean, the goal here is scale mid-floor to the best of our ability, I think. Drag down kills another man on bottom floor. I love that for me. I'm going to go ahead and click the shelter here, I think. This will be important. Yeah. Okay, fine. Mid floor is looking pretty decent. As long as we don't get another bomb, we're fine. As long as we don't get another bomb. I mean, it's tough. I can save him on bottom in kind of shocking form by reforming a... And I take 10 either way, so I'm going to bring back a bigger dreg that takes two hits for me. And then you can hosting kin out the bomb here, and he lives, and that's cool. We want to fracture mid-floor, and a single drip fall, I think, does decent work here. Yeah, it gets a third kill, which is nice. Cool. Because one shoots, and then these two go ping ping and only six damage comes in and then he they, the other two drags slay out and this makes it very simple I can just play the drag upstairs even though it takes ember drain the nice thing is it just kills that guy next turn no problem cool now what i am going to do is i'm going to drip the bomb out on mid floor that is correct and then i'm going to shoot the conduit on mid floor and we're chilling. Cool. He blows out the bomb, which is funny. I'm going to go ahead and mold back that same dreg again, which is cool. Go ahead and do that. He actually kills the, the protector, which is fun. I could even put down the bog fly and we get an extra, like, 100 damage in. Cool. Uh, we're fine. We, we, we get through this. We just have raw stats that are okay for this particular setup. Look at that. Incredible. We have a floor that's doing solid damage. Random train stewards doing 50s. Seems good to me. This is strange. It's strange, but also I feel re reasonably confident in all of our decisions here. I think we've kind of done this pretty well. I think Wormkin Etchings is pretty good here. I'm going to grab that, because I am going to be on the first of kin angle. It also had a minus one in it, which is cool. I'm happy for that. It's cheaper. None of these units are relevant to me. We skip them. Cool. We move on. Now, if I'm playing correctly, I should hopefully start clearing rando garbage units out of my deck. We're going to tunnel vision removals here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. We stay at 15 shards essentially all the way through ring 7 now is my plan. Or I'm, I guess I will do the ring 6 infusion because I want to dupe with the infusion. So until ring 6. So now we stay super low on shards, take nothing. Card draw is your friend, I think. What Arcus is this? Failure? Okay, it's rage. So I'm not as afraid of rage. I just want to remove cards. So, Ember's not bad. The reason why Ember's not bad is because things are expensive. And I have a draw relic already from Winged Steel. And I'm not playing all my cards. I'm actually going to grab Ember here, as bizarre as this is. I don't need space, is the thing. Because we're using sketch nonsense. Now I can Tunnel Vision Magic Shop here. Or I can go to a Steel Shop right now. I could go to a steel shop right now and begin looking for upgrades, which is... It's an option. Yeah, that is... It's an option. Let me think about this for a little bit, because I do need to make sure I make a good call here. Yeah, let's see. So... What else could I do? 
Removals are great. Magic Shop is basically just minus ones into Shelter, Wormkin Etchings. My goal here, by the way, is to cycle Wormkin Etchings. I'm gonna, I'd love to dupe the Wormkin Etchings, but I'm not gonna be able to because I need to dupe other things. But just worm, just like play out some stuff, worm connectings it back, be good. The only thing I could take from the left side is a multi strike. It's truly the only upgrade that I want here. So I'm gonna go to the right. By choosing this, I don't get to look for a multi strike again until ring. What is it? Six, and ring seven. Ring six is magic shop is stronger. So in that case, let's go look right now. I think it's actually fine to look for the moment. See what we see. Endless, not it. Didn't get it. Okay, fine. It's fine. Don't take any shards. We chill. Okay. I mean, that was garbage. 100% garbage. We're going to take Corruptor here. I'm going to lean in on this. I am going to buy removals here because every removal is valuable. And I'm coming up on a trinket shop that I'm not going to go to, I don't think. I'm going to this magic shop with money. So... We're going to purge here. I'm going to purge train stewards because they're the worst version of everything here. All right, fine. Moving on. 15 shards. It sucks. That's bad, but it's okay. We didn't get conduits at least. Don't click this seal of multi strike. We're just chilling. There is very high risk to everything. Now, interestingly, we got garbage on mid floor. Not actually mad about it, but all of it's kind of going to burn out. So the right thing then is play a guy bottom. Yeah, we're playing a guy bottom floor. Then we're going to play a guy Up floor do I chief drop chief and then not play Carver here I could chief and drip him in which is fine I think we do need to chief here it's hard I mean skipping chief is bad then we drop him in airdrop in the man and we chill we don't get the carver here which is unfortunate but fine i'm going to go ahead and drag upstairs i think let the curse out bottom floor don't love this i think we drag upstairs give me the collector i clear mid i'm gonna reap in back on bottom i get total recall here Nothing gets killed there. I think I may as well drip and save nine health on my downstairs fella here. Sure. Okay. We at least didn't get conduits, which was the scariest thing for me to consider here. Molded is strong here. I can get a drag back. I like that quite a bit and just play it in front here. Nice. I can blast on bottom, which I'm a fan of. Yeah, it's good. Do it. I'm going to reap middle, and then I think this is actually a shelter on mid floor here. Saves this guy. We actually do respectable damage on this floor. Yeah, it's true. Bottom floor, terrifying. I need to kill this middleman. Great, we did it. Good job. Let's play out a drag to tank here, and then mid floor is getting clear. Good. Good, good, good. So I guess we reap downstairs to stop that curse. Now, as far as what's coming up, I'm guaranteed to see a Carver next turn, so I think we chill on these. I want to have a better turn next turn. Yeah. Do I, am I, I get the drip fall, potentially. Yeah, I want to drop him in. Okay, fine. Bottom floor clears out in a good way. Yeah, we just get Carver. We airdrop in the man, and then we fracture mid floor and do it again. And this floor is looking pretty respectable here, I think. Bottom floor, this guy does a chunk of damage. I think we are going to fracture one of these guys out on bottom. Stop that curse. I can stop, what is this, 12 damage? 
I could also worm kin etchings back some stuff. What does that give me? Hosting kin? Shelter is nice. Alright, sure. Now, is the reform on Dreg better here? Burnout 4? It just gives an extra curse, right? I think we just drip here. And then we can blast the other guy here, and we do even better. Cool. Good. Honestly, this is fine. Then all of those curse guys to go away. We easy win on middle. Yeah, no problems. Cool. You drip once. You shelter. Mid floor is looking fine. Okay. Bizarre, but yes, yeah, still okay. Cool. We're going to grab some holdover. Soul crushing guilt is a weird card choice. I don't have the echo generation for it, but it's very interesting. I do like it. Permafrost Forgotten Trade is probably the take here. The Permafrost doesn't add much, but I do like having another Purple Etch. Sure, yeah, okay, we'll take it. Purple Engulfed in Smoke with a minus one in it is great. Click it. Cool. Love that for me. Now I'm tunnel visioning removals here. Let's go left. 100%. Magic Shop is interesting. I get another Permafrost. 20 consume, no good targets. Let's go ahead and minus one that engulfed in smoke down to zero here. That's a for sure pick. Permafrost, I don't know. Let's get rid of the Vortex. I'm going to cut the last train steward. We're going to start working on... Dregs? Dregs. Yeah, Dregs. Okay, goodbye, Dreg. We're getting closer. We have one, two, three six more removals to cut before we can get remotely consistent i could get one here i should re-roll because a holdover here is neat there's the argument for a permafrost on a drip fall i don't know i think if we just intrinsic the drip fall it's going to be better eventually we get this first of kin infused with a shard soul carver we're gonna have three of them and the hope is that I find a multi-strike, but you know, fair enough. Let's re-roll this. I don't think the permafrost is adding this here, adding the value. Sure, double stack is not terrible. A minus one, I could double stack the shelter. It makes the wormkin etchings a little stronger. I do like that. It's not bad. I'm leaning towards a removal here, though. My current thought process. Yeah, I kind of am leaning towards this. So, because the sketches play is a little more relevant. The stack stone's okay. I think we just go ahead and make something cheaper. And that will be nice. We'll make a fracture cheaper. Sure, seems good. We're getting to the point where I'm able to maybe play all my cards a little more relevantly. So that's good. Then I'm just going to burn a card on a dreg here. Good. Five remaining. I'm not taking that money. Am I? I could take the money and then go hunt the steel shop. I get another removal. It becomes a, what, a 180 cost. I can buy that removal. I do like this magic shop. It comes with two removals, though, which is cool. Two removals gets us essentially to three... Four or five cards, which means with one purchased removal. I mean, that means I can be essentially online by Arcus, which is pretty good, I think. About as pretty important, if I'm being real with you. Let's chill. Don't take any more shards here. We're moving on. Okay. Self made harpy. Terrifying. I could. Can I get rid of the armor emblem? Uh, no. Let's just not take the armor emblem here. We're not strong, is the thing. We're skating by, and this it looks okay. We got one guy on the floor. Look at that. Look at him go. So we go Carver, and we drop the goon in. Then we Chief Middle. Creep once on bottom, and then I etch mid-floor is solid. Sure. Hey, look. Just hit Engulfed in Smoke, and Run is free, in my opinion. Cool. I'm just going to plow out some drags downstairs, draw a card. It's good. It is correct, in my opinion, to play purples on mid-floor. Seems good. I'm not going to play the Wormkin etchings yet. Stealth did huge work here. Amazing. 
Okay, we get the other drip. Drop in, chief. All right, we've created a monstrosity that I'm very pleased with. Go team. Let's shoot a man middle. It's good to do it. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and click molded because you might as well. Mid floor, whatever. Doesn't matter. Go ahead and click the shelter here. It's a good play. Great job. 14 armor. Wonderful. Not going to click on total recall. Okay. If I hadn't pushed around there, I might have actually been able to insta kill that guy and save the six, kind of surprisingly, but it's okay. Remember, purples on mid floor is your friend. Now I think we can click worm connections. Yep, it's good. Which draws into Forgotten Trait. Yep, it's good. I can drip this guy in front and we kill without having anything worried about here. Good. Great. Now First of Kin can shoot the middle guy. But we're, so we do... We shoot this other friend here, which kills. And then we get that super kill. And then we fracture, fracture. I guess we click molded. There's no reason not to. It's fine. And then we press the shelter one last time. And that's a pretty good turn, I think. This seems pretty okay to me. Stealth mid floor. Great. Reap downstairs. We may as well do damage here. There's really not many cards left. I guess I can pull back the fracture here. It pulls it only from your discard pile. So whatever. Fine. And then burn it. Okay. Cool. Good to me. We have some stealth. We easily kill this combat. Good job. Incredible. We're, we're way ahead of where we would need to be to actually win here. <laughs> way ahead of that. Because I'm low on shards and everything. Remove consume broken memories is sick because of Wormkin etching cycling. Yeah, that's nuts. We're going to click that. It's also purple. Incredible. Remnant Host is not great. Sacred Wick's not great. A plus 10 Subsuming Blade. I mean, the ping is nice, I suppose. I haven't found one yet other than Hosting Kin. Let's skip this, though. It's okay. Now, I think we can actually forcefully assemble our floor if I go to the right here. I can remove down to the right number. But if I can assemble the squad based on what I just did on Harpy into Arcus, we're chilling. I do get another removal because I have to do the infusion here prior to the duping. So I'm going to go left. I hate this, but I, I mean, I could argue to go right here and get, get, get the cuts. But I'm going down to one removal here because the carver gets infused. So that becomes bog flies. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you can remove two dregs here and you're guaranteed to get the carver first of kin on the floor. That's true. It's absolutely true. If I go left, I'm gambling on finding a multi strike, which is extremely good if I hit it. Extremely good. Just straight up. I don't value the caverns particularly highly here because I don't have an overstack. And if they gave me a Sunderstone, I'd actually probably not want it. Like, it's okay. I guess I'd take it, but I don't love it. In fact, I might instead do like Sapstone into a bog fly and just keep that guy around for Divinity. The removals are the big winner here, though. Magic Shop is like, okay, whatever. I maybe buy a removal and then a minus one, and that's it. It's okay to get the minus one, yeah. I'm fine with it, I suppose, but... If I see a multi-strike now, I think we pop off really hard. The thing is, is that I just... There's not a lot... The only value here really is the magic shop. I mean, not the magic shop, the unstable vortex. Getting those cuts is pretty good. But I assembled pretty effectively on harpy i'm gonna go left i think we're, we're at an opportunity where if i can see this before the dupe we're, we're very happy yo just hit incredible amazing we see it before the we see it before the dupe and we're super online with it now i can comfortably do my carver infusion at long last into the first of kin 
He's huge, but I don't mind. It's pretty much an optimal pick here. Intrinsic as well. Guarantees what I want. I should. I have to take this intrinsic now that it's shown. It's intrinsic dripfall. We, we have it, right? We have it. Cool. I click nothing else, and we're good. This guarantees that I can get Chief on the floor with my Carver setup. I'm almost certain this is not whatever this person submitted this run to do. I, they're pro they probably played the burnout line. I don't even know what it looks like at this point. I've been so tunnel visioning on how to assemble this the whole business here that I think it's fine. But let's go on. I think we beat Arcus at only 50 shards, right? And then we dupe again on... We get 30 shards next floor to go to 80. We get 15. We at least... as The, the only thing I have to be careful about is... No, I can take plus 30s. So I have a hosting kid. Okay. I was worried about not having magic power spots, but I do have them. We're guaranteed to hit 100. Just chill and move on. Cool. Good. Now it's just clean it up. It's just clean it up. Arcus is going to be the hardest combat here. Cool. We actually just high roll here. Amazing. Let's go ahead and drop Chief in. And I'm going to reap my own guy because I think it's worth it. Goodbye, Dreg. Goodbye, Dreg. Shelter here. Powerful. Good. Great. Oh no, I killed a Dreg. I don't really care. We're gonna go ahead and stealth here. I'm gonna reap the boss. I'm gonna play out this Dreg in... Ooh, I don't wanna take that curse. It's broken memories. Back to shelter. Play the shelter. It's good. Not going to play the drag, I guess. We chill. My guy in front is absolutely crushing it, though. Like, seriously, he crushes it. I don't even have to play cards here. As annoying as it is, really, I'm just going to go ahead and fracture the boss upstairs, fracture this guy in the bottom downstairs, and then play nothing. Okay, fine. Great. That was my bad turn. I go ahead and keep the etches alive. It is worth it to do it. We're going to engulf in smoke here. You may as well mold back a drag at this point. What did I have in here? I don't want to burn that engulf in smoke, I don't think. I'm going to play the forgotten trade here as well. It's a good etch. Sure. You went mid floor. It's dangerous, brother. Let's go ahead and broken memories. We're going to bring back the shelter again. Fracture, fracture, draw into the shelter and play it. It's good. I'm a fan. Sure. We do another solid chunk of damage to the boss here, which is great. Not afraid of it. It is worth it to fracture, fracture, middle. I'm going to drip the boss into the floor because I think he takes like 200 from it. Cool. It's good. And then I worm can etchings to bring back some other plays. I think this boss stands a little chance of beating me here. Yeah, there's really not much to say other than we just go ham here. Yeah, we just get huge turn and then I get a huge 20 armor play. This guy's super dead. Our frontline man is powerful. Yeah, so we just go ahead and engulfed in smoke total recall second engulfed in smoke we mega etch here i'm gonna go ahead and broken memories here into wait for it engulfed in smoke burn some other etches on total recall and chill and now we have even more stealth and this does not matter guy is super dead Cool. This gets even better when I have a second one of these, and I think we assemble a very solid floor. A second Wormkin etchings? How do I feel about that? You could really loop it here, right? You could loop, which is awesome. The fact that they both rolled minus ones here is pretty sick, because I am not going to be able to take any other kind of stuff, right? There's not like I can go to a magic shop here. I'm going to grab it. Another minus one Wormkin etchings? Incredible. I'm going to take card draw here. Yeah. Card draw. We don't need space. Don't need Ember at this point. I already took the one. So I think we're good. This is going to be a bizarro world land, but we get unneeded health. I get to dupe my guy, which is awesome. Where are you at, buddy? There you are. Incredible. 
Hell vent, not removal. Okay. And then we do math here. And it is simply drag remove, drag remove. Take the divine horde here. I'm going to grab winged indulgence, I think. Yes, it's fine. This jack strips was worth considering for damage shield wave on divinity, but I don't think it matters too terribly much. Corruptor three. Yes. Now, it is possible still that we don't assemble the floor. I have five units. Right? But I do have good odds. We clean this up for the last time on ring eight. All of my money, I think, is going to go into double removals here. I clear two units out. And then we dupe the guy one last time and we get a bog fly for free on the floor which is hey free hits i'll take it yeah i think we're solid i would like i would like very much to get this money this is shade wings i think this is doable there's a possibility we get screwed here we didn't get screwed excellent incredible news we just go ahead and Drop our man in with the intrinsic. Amazing. Let's go ahead and begin the scaling. Forgotten trade here. Killing a guy on bottom floor is actually pretty good too, just for the record. But forgotten trade is excellent. Hosting can. I am just going to blast the dude, actually. I'm going to go ahead and worm can etchings mid floor. And then just straight up broken memories back the worm can etchings and chill i think that should give me my hosting kin back i think yeah it does great here's some stealth amazing i'm gonna blast this guy in back i think it's worth it super worth it do click the forgotten trade here we draw into shelter which is fun so what i my plan here is i want to bog fly upstairs and reap to get this collector I'm then going to shelter and wormkin etchings here to draw back into some other stuff. Good, we're clearing this big floor. We do a lot of damage here, which is amazing. I can hosting kin. Doesn't really change anything to click the hosting kin, but it's okay. We only take damage from the spikes here, which is nice. It is worth it to play your echoes. I could drop in the guy. I mean, there's no reason not to right get in here champ there you go bud and then we go ahead and click forgotten trade we draw something cool this looks okay to me i'm gonna go ahead and shelter here and then wormkin etchings this back and i think we chill from here right we have quick multi so i really there's not a lot to fear here kill the man which means that we don't even have to take any hits here play everything else out forgotten trade fracture shelter Wormkin etchings. I mean, we're looping here, and our damage is just disgusting as a result. The hosting kin is a very good pickup, for the record. It's just a solid play. The total recall is a problem for anyone keeping track at home, but it's okay. The total recall is suboptimal, in my opinion, but... We don't really have the choice of getting rid of it. My removals are spent elsewhere. I'm doing enough damage to clear waves, though, so really, I think we're golden there. Just keep shooting enemies, basically. Play cards out. We're generating a lot of armor, which is nice. Even if my floor is getting kind of pummeled a bit. I'm going to go ahead and pop one of these guys on the back on bottom. I'm going to go ahead and fracture the other guy. Very cool, very cool. We now have no threats on the floor. Take armor, cycle cards. At this point, I think the Wormkin etchings are pretty much exactly what we want, right? There's just nothing else I really need here. So the only downside is I don't draw into my engulfed in smoke pretty much ever, but that's fair. It's true. It is a little bit of a bummer, but we're also generating enough armor that I'm not really mad about it. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, we killed this guy in one turn, so whatever. What am I worried about? It's actually fine. And that was the last hardest card, or hardest combat, because we don't have the full squad assembled yet. 
We skip this stuff. I don't need this return soul. It's fine. I don't want to add stuff randomly to the pool. Mortal Entrapment would not be bad. Just straight up dazing the divinity for a couple rounds is pretty decent here. I'm going to click it. I actually think this is a fine pick. Yeah. I think that's fine. Do a little bit more. We go left. Continue taking, uh, continue the historical choice of taking pyre remains while at full health. Go team. I'm going to vaguely look for like a pyre stone housing in case it might exist. Mold braces, concussive coals, faulty loader. Gross. Serrated mandibles is pretty sick. I'm going to click that at least. All right. Okay, no pyre stone housing, so no extra endless on my floor. I will buy two removals. Drag out. And then bog fly out. Okay. All my money there. I had enough. I managed to take that 400. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and first of kin dupe here. Third man on the floor. We have it guaranteed. It's going to be bog fly and then triple first of kins, which is pretty much perfect. And then we have to take some shards here still. Pen and piercing. Plus 30. I mean, considering how much I'm cycling the host of kin, going to 23 and piercing is pretty great here. So I'm going to click that and then we sit at 100. And I don't think this this plus 30 is that important. I mean, 25. Okay, 53 is not a bad threshold. I am cycling this card. Sure, why not? Is it really that good? No, it's not. I actually think we want to chill on mini boss health, maybe. This will be fine. Is it? I actually think the plus 30 might matter. 25 is an important threshold for some fights on the Divinity, right? 20 clears the Shaman. 10 clears the Conduits. 25 is your Light Wings, your Shade Wings plays, though. I think we easily go tall. I'm just going to click this. I think 120 is a cozy point to be at. 90 gold into something. I don't know. Here, you're going to put Bogfly in. Here we go. Yeah, go for it, champ. He gets a battle stone. I don't know what else to tell you. I'm not putting the burnout in him because I kind of want him to stay alive on the floor. He's if he spawns in the spawns in the back, he actually gets to like be a slap, which is pretty cool. The 15 health will keep him from dying immediately to spikes, though, which is nice. All right, 120 out of 100. I'm feeling pretty decent about this. Let's go ahead and move on. I don't know what the other players expected here or what the play was in the other runs. I don't know if anyone else felt confident enough for Wormkin sketches here, but I did. I did is all I'm going to tell you. Anyway, I'm currently dealing. Interesting. I'm currently dealing 873 damage to the boss on turn one. That's pretty decent. Reasonable, I would argue. I am just going to click all cards pretty much. Armor is good. Great news. Cool. Total Recall is a bad card. We have a lot of stuff in this deck that I couldn't clean up, and it's just bad, but I don't really care that terribly much. You shoot one of these men, get rid of him. And a Broken Memories back the... I'm going to draw into it on this turn, so let's take back the shelter here. Actually, the Hosting Kin. It's going to be the Hosting Kin, as silly as it is, because I just shoot one of these other guys and push, like, another thousand damage through. And then we Wormkin Etchings loop and begin this. I mean, we're doing... I think we might actually pre-Relentless Seraph here. If he had gone up, I would have dragged him back down, which is very funny. But he didn't. It's fine. Pretty strong, I think. I'll shoot him. I shot him. There you go. My guy's got five days. Cool. And then we just cycle this and we chill, I'm pretty sure. He comes back middle. He might actually die. I could see it possibly happening here. What's in here? A bunch of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and click the total recall then. Creep him. Mortal entrapment him. And then check it. You just drip all these things out of the way. And we kill him on this turn. Right? He's just gone. Guy is dead. Goodbye, Chase. All right, the Bogfly got the kill. Look, I was even giving Bogfly dirt. Why would I ever keep this guy on my floor for the end game? Well, I don't know, six turn boss rush on Divinity or on Seraph makes me feel pretty good about him. 
random extra hit on the floor. I feel very strong into this. I'm I'm very interested. I don't think anyone else is going to have done this. Also, rip my guy Bogfly. He spawned in front. True. Goodbye, my man. My man's is dead here. You know, it'll do. It has to. It'll do. It's fine. It's fine. Cool. That's like 1,250. Very sad about my man Bogfly is spawning in front there. It's okay. It happens. It does indeed happen. Okay, I'm going to shoot one of these guys because I want the hit to go through to the divinity here. I'm also going to drip fall the divinity. I think that's worthwhile. And I think the shelter is the right pick here. It's etch and purple. Yeah, good. Cool. I'm doing 600 here. I don't know about the pre-relentless on this just because the floors are so wide. But... Yeah, it's tough. I'm going to molded my guy back. Get him, champ. Hey, okay. I'll take the forgotten trade hit here. That's good. Mortal entrapment in the back. Broken memories. I'm going to bring back the hosting kin here. It's actually the wormkin etchings I want to play more than anything. Yeah, we'll do it. Cool. My guy upstairs does 10 damage and dies. Great. Now, mid floor is going to look pretty beefy. But that's okay. I'm actually not clearing the floor, which will change very quickly, I think. Go ahead and click Wormkin Etchings first. I want to start this loop. Right. I think we click Wormkin Etchings here. I don't get to play the shelter. I want to make sure that it's looping is the thing. So, yeah, okay, we we finally got it. I'm going to pop this man in front. Just end that real quick. Go ahead and play the Reap here. Play out the Curse, draw a card. It's Forgotten Trade here. Then it's Wormkin Etchings. Total Recall is an interesting play. I'm going to do that because I think it gives me a very powerful turn here. Yeah. It's a very strong one. I think we might pre-relentless next turn if I play my cards right. Last one guy. Let's forgotten trade. Wormkin etchings. Consume. Get the kill. All right, cool. I actually think this worked out pretty well. Spine Chief gets the final shot. We got a four-turn boss rush there. That's pretty high scoring for this. We pre-relentless both final bosses. Six turn on chase is pretty sick, if I'm being clear. That's a pretty good run. I'm very interested in how our score looks. It's probably the highest score on this board, in my opinion. It sure is, by a sizable margin. Let's go to the challenge. Okay. Now, I'm interested. Did anyone else do sketches here? Nope. This is a combustible wax play. I'm interested in what this line looked like. Let's check it out. Decayer. I I don't know if I agree with Decayer here. It's not bad, but you start with dregs. This becomes really slow. I guess you can get away with it, though. I guess so. Then there's a Baron Infusion infused with Paraffin Enforcer. With a, there's the Multi-Strike. Okay. Okay, so basically what's happening here is... Yeah, I get it. So what's happening here is they're playing the Baron for your Relentless Kill. You Baron plus Chief on bottom floor. You Stealth and otherwise use Reap to scale this man. And then he Paraffin Enforcers it out and kills stuff. You don't get any kind of pre-Relentless business. Yeah, no, as you can see it. No, no, no pre-Relentless done whatsoever. Very straightforward, though. You get a good, a decent turn set up. Sure. I mean, I think I can see this winning. It's fine. I think this is maybe dicey in the early game. I guess they did fine. They took 14 on Tormentors. They did take that multi-strike, though. Eight on Harpy. Otherwise took nothing. I mean, pretty clean overall, I guess. Interesting. Interesting. 
Yeah, all right. I can see it happening. I mean, I, I think Chief is strong enough that you could get this win no matter what. I'm not worried about it, but uh, this is interesting to see. Very cool. This is the submitter. The submitter actually won. Oh, okay, fair enough. They did decayer as well with the baron infused with the carver i actually don't think the carver infusion is correct here because you had to pay the tax of getting space to fit it on the floor i think you could maybe have done the intrinsic and drop your squad together and play middle though since you start with the drip falls did you remove both drip falls i think they actually removed both drip falls because they're not purple okay fair enough i think the right play is either you do what you did here and you play decay or middle, right? So you you intrinsic a drip fall, you put your big man in front on bottom, you then put decay or middle and drip him in with the intrinsic and then play bottom without having to worry about space, or you just use the paraffin enforcer infusion. Or even heck, self-infuse the Baron wins here as well. You don't need that much damage. You just need to win Relentless. And with a combination of Decay or Killing Everything, the Baron scales enough. So I can see how you could improve this. But you otherwise did draft mostly the cards I would recommend. Like, I don't know why you click Soul Cripple. This is not a great card here. It's actually pretty bad. In fact, it's not purple and it takes two Ember. Rough. But other things here are fine. I think a lot of this other stuff is okay. Cool. Okay, fair enough. Some of the people who lost, lost early. All right, fair enough. Lost on Daedalus, lost on Conduits. That's pretty impressive. Very little to say here. Oh, hey, look, there's Pyrestone housing. I guess I did, it was much earlier in the run. Interesting. Oh, I guess they quit. All right, never mind. Cool, not much to add then. I think we did something bizarre. I think this is really cool because I started with Two bog flies, five dregs. Yeah, two two bog flies, five dregs, and then four train stewards is eleven units, and we still took a starting sketches. The how do I how do I articulate that? It's the eleven unit starter sketches run, pretty much. It's kind of whack. I still immediately will tell you I would do this again. There's a reason I picked this. It's not because I felt like I could cheese it. It's because I felt like I could be consistent enough because Chief is strong enough. And frankly, the opening drip falls in my deck are super important for me considering this. I assembled the squad a number of times on mid floor as a result of this. It's also another reason why drip fall is great with sketches in general, because you're playing middle. You're not playing top. Very, very solid. Just not a lot to add there. And yeah, we went all in on Corruptor. I don't know. Maybe it's weird for people, but hopefully this was informative because this is maybe not something that anyone else did here. Or maybe maybe you see this opener and you go, whoa, sketches, not a chance. The banners were well aligned for it. We're Wormkin. We had Corruptor. I mean, I, I think all the pieces are there, so... Anyway, that's a victory. Brings us up to 66 wins on the series. Incredible work, team. I will let you go there. So, yeah, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.